I played football, so I, and I grew up in Texas, so I wasn't, there was no rock scene. They, uh, I'm trying to remember if the first band I saw was the Kingsman or Doug Clark and the Hot Nuts. Now, for those people who don't know, Kingsman you know, because of Louie Louie. But Doug Clark and the Hot Nuts, they, they were a band that did uh, sexual pun material. Um, uh, they, they, I don't know how many people know the song, but a lot of people know the song. They did the song, see the man against the wall, he ain't got no nuts at all. Yeah, nuts, hot nuts, get him from your peanut man. And they would go, that song would last at least 20 minutes. And they had more verses than you can possibly imagine. So, and the other, um, if you went down to what was the equivalent of spring break back when I was in high school, you'd go to Galveston, Texas. And I saw, actually saw, at least I'm, almost 99.8% sure that I saw Joplin in about 1963 in a cover band in Galveston wearing white go-go boots because I met her later and asked her about it and she said don't you ever talk to me about that ever and so I never got a straight answer out of her I only got don't mention that don't talk to me about that I was never anywhere in white go-go boots and you know that so um, so I just let it drop at that point. The rock scene that I got into would have been in Detroit in the later 60s, around 68, and that was with Seeger, MC5, Scott Richard, uh, uh, the guys who first did the uh, Brownsville Station, they were the first people to do uh, The Boys Are Back in Town. A lot of festivals. We had festivals before Woodstock and and, and Nobody from the Detroit area got invited to Woodstock, and everybody was pissed off. I, I mean, the MC5 were really upset that they didn't get invited to Woodstock. And um, so they threw what they called the Detroit Rock and Roll Revival, and uh, drew almost 150,000 people and Sun Ra, Dr. John, we were on that, Nugent, MC5, uh, Grand Funk Railroad opened it, opened the Detroit Rock and Roll Bible. And so I was around uh, also Mark Farner and Grand Funk and Terry Knight, when they were called Terry Knight in the Pack. So that was, that was my roots and when we played uh, all the time at a place called the Grandy Ballroom in Detroit. And everybody came through there. Uh, I opened for The Who, I opened for Hendrix, I opened for Grateful Dead. Uh, I, 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 I opened for everybody that you can think of off the top of your head with the exception of the Jefferson Airplane, the Beatles, and the Rolling Stones. The first night we ever opened for The Who, because you only had 25 minutes maybe, he I looked out the corner of my eye and he had come up on the stage at the Grandy Ballroom and was watching me. So I was, I freaked out when I saw Daltrey standing there. I was like, oh my God. So I, I, I remember being really nervous. I had um, 12 park hands on either side of the stage and I worked with my foot. I had four color changes. I, had, I controlled the front of the house from the side of the stage. And the way I would know that people could hear it is I go up and ask, can you hear? They go, no. Can you hear the drums? No. We need. You need more bass drum? Yeah. Okay. Fine. <laughs> My four uh, favorite bands of all time would have been the Who, probably the Who, MC5, the Buffalo Springfield, who have just gotten back together. I can't believe it. And uh, Joe Cocker and the Grease Band with Leon Russell. And uh, singers, singing wise, I mean, no one back in the '60s. I, I mean, no one could touch Joplin and Cocker. No one. It was it was driven uh, on pure emotion. They were. It, it, it's like Frank Sinatra was driven on pure emotion, but he had a different style of singing. 
So his eyes were open, not all the time, but his eyes were open, but he knew how to sell you a song and he was, and he sold you that song on what was going on inside of him. And the, uh, the two people that I saw with Joplin and Cocker that just um, uh, literally jaw dropped. I, I mean, just you just stood there and jaw, dropped your jaw. The the other thing was the emotion that you got from them on that song. When Cocker sang, "I need a little help from my friends," man, you wanted to go up there and hold them up. And when Joplin sang, "Take another little piece of my heart," you just wanted to like. Oh God! And this, you know, I mean, she was she was bleeding for her audience. So I learned my lessons from those, uh, and, and another and another one, which has nothing to do with rock, but Al Green. Um, so if I have influences from anywhere in my existence other than Mahalia Jackson or in our Broadway musicals, it's Joplin, Cocker, Al Green, and Aretha Franklin.